All right, guys. So today we are talking about shape, center, and spread of data. This is 9.6 and 9.7 in your Math Nation workbook. Okay, so let's get right into it. Shape of data tells us how the data is distributed. The center of data, so your center of data, gives us the middle of the data set. This can be found by the mean or the median, okay, the middle. The spread of data tells us how close together or spread out the data set is. So this can be found, so this can be found by your range, your interquartile range, your mean absolute deviation, or your standard deviation. That tells you either how close together or spread out your data is. The peak is the point where the data is higher than the other parts. Okay. This can be found by the mode. This is when it's higher, that's your mode. That's what's occurring the most. If there's one peak, it's called unimodal. Two peaks, bimodal. Multi-peaks, well, multimodal. And if there's no peaks, then it would be called uniform. So in our example, students were surveyed on how many minutes they spread, they spend reading each night. So if this is our data, how would you describe the shape of this data? Look at what's happening here. We're going up and we get to our peak and then we start to come down. So what is happening with our shape of the data? Well, that data is symmetric. This is what we call a normal distribution. This is your classic bell curve. And that just means that your data, most of your data points, the majority of your data is in the middle. That is a normal distribution, okay? How many peaks does this graph have? Well, there's one peak. So it's unimodal. But we really don't get much into that here in Algebra 1. I'll just write it because it's in our notes, but we don't really have to worry about that too much. Estimate the center. So the mean or median. OK, estimate the center. Our mean or median of this data set. Well, the center of our data is right here. That is where our tallest peak is, OK? That happens to be where our peak is. This is the center of the data. So how would you estimate it? Well, if that part, that interval on my histogram is 15 to 19, I would say that's about 17. So our mean or median would be about 17. How would you describe the spread of data? Well, the spread refers to our range. OK, so if we're looking at our range of data, our spread of data. OK, we're looking for our lowest and our highest numbers. That's our spread. And our spread here or our range. 
is 0 to 34, so it's relatively spread out. But data sets are not always going to be symmetric or in a normal distribution. So data sets can be categorized by how they are shaped. And here are the three possible shapes of a data set. So we've already talked about symmetric. And symmetric above that graph, I want you to write normal distribution. Okay, so we can either have a normal distribution or symmetric shape. And that's just when it looks like a regular bell curve. Okay. A symmetric shaped histogram or a symmetric box plot where my median is in the middle and my box is and whiskers are equal distance. Right, I have a bell shaped curve the mean and median are the same or very close, okay? So that's what it looks like to have a symmetric or normal distribution group of data. The next that we're gonna look at is when it's skewed right, okay? If we have skewed right data, it takes on this shape. Oh, that wasn't a very good. I'm going to try that again. Okay, it tails off to the right. Okay, so the tail is going to the right. So that means I have a skewed right histogram, skewed right data. And I always like to imagine this as a whale. That's just how I picture it in my head. This is a giant whale. My data is tailing off to the right. When I draw my little fancy curve over top, I see a tail going off to the right. And so I knew I know my data is skewed right. Okay. You will also see that when you have a skewed right data, you your box <clears throat> plot is gonna look more like this as well. Right? If you had if you have to draw um, your curve more over to the left and the data is going to the right. Didn't draw that very well. Okay, that's the picture you would get and you still have a whale, at least what I imagine a whale, however you want to picture it works fine for me, but that's when you have a skewed right data. Now if your data is skewed to the right, that is called a positive skew. That means your mean is going to be greater than your median. We've already talked about that you have a long tail on the right, and it's also called a positive skew. I don't know why they say that twice, but it's a positive skew. Okay, meaning it's pulling. What's happening here is this data here is pulling um, your data to the right. So it's pulling it in a positive direction, okay? Finally, we have skewed left and our skewed left data looks like that and I still imagine it as a whale and this here is its tail and its tail is going to the left and because my tail is to the left I know my skew is to the left and the same thing here, I know that this is kind of how that data would be shaped. And my data is going to the left. My data points are pulling to the left. And so I have a negative skew now. My mean will be less than my median. My mean is going to be less than my median. My long tail will be on the left, and this is also called a negative skew, okay? Skewed left is a negative skew. Skewed right is a positive skew. 
Those are some key points that you need to remember about shapes of data. Okay, so now we're going to work on comparing data sets. People were asked if they owned cats or dogs. The data is organized into the two histograms below. Okay, what is the shape of the cat owner's histogram? Okay, so here is our cat owners. And what is the shape of their histogram? That's the shape. So my tail here, my tail is on the left. If I have my tail on the left, that means I have a left skew, okay? So I would write, what is the shape of this data? It's skewed left. What is the shape of the dog owner histogram? Well, the dog owner has a normal distribution or symmetric distribution. Okay. Doesn't there's no tail, it's a bell curve. So this is a normal distribution. Symmetric. Okay. How do the spread of the two data sets compare? So now we're looking at the spread of the data. And when we look at the spread, we look at our lowest, our minimum, our lower extreme, and our maximum, our upper extreme. So in cat owners, we go from zero to eight. In dog owners, we also go from zero to eight. So they both have the same spread. the same or similar spread. Remember with a histogram, we don't know what the absolute range is because we don't know the highest piece of data in either of those data sets. We just know the intervals and where they fall. So how do their peaks compare? Well, they both have one peak so they are both unimodal. Okay. So those are our two main pages of notes, but I am going to go ahead and work on some of the practice problems before I end the video, but these are our two note pages. Okay. So let's keep talking about measures of data and spread. So here we were given use the histograms to answer questions one through six. A group of 10th and 12th graders were surveyed about how many t-shirts they own. So looking at these two sets of data, which data set is symmetric? Okay, well, let's draw our little curve. This is one, this is our 10th graders. That looks like pretty symmetric. And then this is our 12th graders. What's happening with our 12th graders? Well, we have a tail to the left, so this is going to be skewed left. I'm going to zoom that in so I can write it a little bit neater. So this is skewed left. In my 10th graders, this is a normal distribution or symmetric. I'm just going to put normal. Okay. So which data is symmetric? Well, that's going to be our 10th graders. Give a possible reason for their difference in their shapes. So looking at this data, why do you think 10th graders may have, their peak is gonna be 10 to 14 shirts? But for 12th graders, they would have maybe 15 to 19 t-shirts. That's where their peak is. Well, what do we know about 12th graders versus 10th graders? 
Well, 12th graders have been alive for two extra years or are a little bit older, so maybe they've had a chance to collect t-shirts just a little bit longer. So I'm going to go with that hypothesis, that 12th graders have had longer to collect shirts. Okay, how do the centers compare? Which is greater? Well, we're looking at the centers. Okay, where is the center of our data for our 10th graders? Okay, our center of data for our 10th graders is going to be 10 to 14. Well, the center of our data for the 12th graders is going to be 15 to 19. So I can determine that the center of my data is higher for my 12th graders. So 12th graders have a higher center. How do the spreads of each data set compare? Well, the spreads, let's see. Remember our spread, we're talking about 0 to 4 up to 24, and we have 0 to 4 and up to 24. So our spreads are the same for both grades. They are the same. What is the shape of the 12th grade data set? The 12th grade data set we've already talked about is skewed left, and that's because the tail is going to the left. Okay, this here is our tail. And when we have our tail on the left side of our data, then that means it is skewed left. Okay. Are the sets unimodal, bimodal, or uniform? Both of these sets are unimodal. They both have just one peak. All right. Now we have to use the box and whisker plots to answer questions number 7 through 12. The population of 15 rural towns in Georgia and 15 rural towns in Alabama are organized and displayed using the box and whisker plots below. Which state's data, sets, data set has a greater center? Okay, so we're looking at our center here. And if we're looking at our center, we're comparing our medians of our box plot. So our center for Georgia is 20, and our center for Alabama is 25. So which, set, which state's data set has a greater center? That would be Alabama. And that's because it's 25. How do the shapes of each data set compare? Well, again, when we're looking at shapes of our data set, the Alabama one is a normal distribution. So Alabama equals normal. And for our Georgia, Our tail is going to the right, so our Georgia is going to be skewed right. I'm kind of out of space, so I'm just going to write a G skewed right. G equals skewed right. Okay, if our, what we're really looking at when we're looking um, for our skewness, okay, 
g is skewed right. What we're really looking at is one, we're looking at our tail, but also we're looking to see where that center is. And if that center is to the left, then that actually means that our data is going to be skewed right. I know it's a little bit backwards and it just takes practice getting used to it, okay? So does either data set have an outlier? Well, we haven't really talked about outliers yet. We'll talk about outliers in um, section nine, topic nine. But does either data set have an outlier? And yes, Georgia does have an outlier. And that outlier I'm going to highlight in purple for you. Our Georgia outlier is right here, OK? Because that whisker is so long, that's how I know that I have an outlier. So yes, and we'll talk about that in the future, but we'll just answer it right now. Yes, Georgia. And it's about 2000. OK, because this is population in thousands. So 2000 is the outlier. Which state's data set has a larger spread? OK, we're looking at the spread again. OK, and our spread goes from 0 to 50 in Georgia. Really, it goes from 2, sorry, to 50. Oh, I lied. Let's ignore that 50. We're looking at our spread and we're looking where our data ends. So um, Georgia is about 2 to 35. OK. Georgia spread is 2 to 35. And if I'm looking at Alabama's spread, I'm looking at 5 to maybe 47. OK. So Alabama is equal to 5 to 47. Well, so then who has a larger spread? That would be Alabama. Alabama has a larger spread, and that's because it's about 40. The range here is 40. Or I guess they say it's right at 45, but either way. So we went from 5 to 45 versus 2 to 35, so our range was 40 for Alabama. True or false? The 15 rural towns in Georgia are mostly between 15,000 and 30,000. OK, so we're looking at Georgia. And it says that 15 rural towns because they populated 15, the population of 15 rural towns, it says are mostly. So most of the data is between 15,000 and 30,000. Well, 15,000 to 30,000 is where more than 50 per, is where 50% of my data is. So yes, that is true. Which state's data set has a smaller range? Well, if Alabama had a larger spread, then that means Georgia is going to have a smaller range because range and spread are the same thing. So Georgia. All right, that's it for that practice problem. We're going to do one more, and this one's based on dot plots. OK, use the dot plots to answer questions one through six. A group of freshmen and sophomores were asked how many hours they spend on homework each week. How do the shapes of each data set compare? All right, so we're looking at freshman and sophomore. OK, so if we looked at this data for our freshmen, it would go like this. However, we have this over here. This point right here is called an outlier. And we're going to learn more about that in topic nine. OK, that there is an outlier. This, our sophomores, is also a normal or symmetric distribution, and there's no outliers. So what we could write here is how do the shapes compare? 
Well, they're both symmetric except for the outlier. So I'm just going to put both symmetric. without outlier. Okay, if you have to include that outlier, then it would be skewed. Do either group of students have an outlier? Yes, the freshmen. The 10 is your outlier. Which data set has a greater center? Okay, we're looking at our center. Freshmen, the center is three. Sophomores, the center is five. So the sophomores have a greater center. Which group has a wider spread of data? Again, we're looking at the spread. So one to five for my freshmen. So the spread of data would be four. And we're going from two to eight for our sophomores. So that eight minus two is six. So the spread of data for my sophomores is six. So that would be my sophomores have a greater spread. Give one possible reason for the difference in centers for these data sets. Well, if we're talking about time and hours and they spend on homework, I would suggest, or my idea would be that sophomores have harder classes. Therefore, they have more homework, okay? True or false? The data set for the sophomores is uniform. False. It is not uniform, it is unimodal. Remember, uniform is talking about the number of peaks, and it is not uniform because there is one peak, and that makes it a unimodal spread. I mean a unimodal data set, one peak. Okay, this last practice problem, we are looking at leaf and um, the stem and leaf plots, and we don't cover stem and leaf plots, so we can just go ahead and cross that out. And that is it for our practice problems. All right, when you finish this classwork assignment, you can go ahead and get started on your homework. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.